Chapter 11 Identifying and Removing Lean Conversion Barriers How can we minimize the impact of the conversion barriers that exist? We ended our discussion of quick changeover by talking about the need for process success and ownership and the need for systems that encourage versus discourage the use of new ideas and tools. Lean conversion barriers are usually not intentional barriers. They will constrain the effectiveness of your lean improvement effort, however, if their impacts are not minimized. Most performance improvement efforts fail to be sustained over time because management simply provides new tools and some training on the usage of those tools. New and improved systems that are needed to effectively support the use of these tools and training over time are not installed. So, for example, jobs may not be redesigned to allow time for lean tool practice. My experience has taught me that there are several key barriers in the form of faulty work systems that hold back the growth of any type of improvement effort, including those of a lean nature. In short, you need the right mix of people using the right tools in a consistent step-by-step manner. A right process, in other words. If we want our performance improvement efforts to endure the test of time, we have to eliminate as many conversion barriers as we can, and we need to minimize the impact of those that remain in place. In this module, we will explore seven common barriers that exist in most organizations and the types of changes that can be made to get over or around them. It will be your challenge to decide which ones you will modify and in what manner and to what degree. As you explore these barriers further, please keep in mind that their existence is consistent across business sectors. How to Destroy Lean Initiatives The seven barriers shown on the graphic are deeply entrenched in the culture of most organizations. The degree that they are rooted in our mental models depends largely on the age of the organization, the nature of the product or service being performed, the location of the facility itself, and the process that was used to hire the people that currently work there. In short, these barriers are common based on deeply rooted practices and tough to change. They are also probably very familiar to you. The positive thing is that the systems you can install for minimizing their impact are relatively simple in design and easy to use. First, you have to decide that systems change is needed. Second, you have to be willing to live with the short-term discomfort that comes from trying to shift your own mental models about how work systems are designed or should be designed. Many people don't have time built into their jobs for projects, even though such system changes are needed to create a lean workplace. People often expect certain levels of performance to be reached, even though the existing systems are not capable of performing consistently at those levels. Leaders are allowed to behave as they wish. They don't communicate enough with their people. And when they do, that communication is often negative. Frontline processes are supposed to become leaner, but office processes are allowed to stay the same. Instead of being recognized in a positive manner for their lean successes, people often see the jobs of their friends or even their own jobs being eliminated. Have you seen any of these barriers kill a performance improvement effort in your own work lifetime? The Challenge of the Time Hump I discovered the time hump many years ago when I was serving as a production manager in a candy company. Since that point in time, I've seen it play out time and time again. The time hump can be seen in the above chart. This chart reflects a best case scenario Because first of all, the transition does occur from the old skill set to the new skill set. Second of all, a significant amount of time was shifted to new tasks. In many cases, however, job transition does not work out this way. One key thing that holds back performance improvement efforts is the fact that we try to always add new tasks to our existing list of tasks and in essence, do two jobs. We fail to eliminate existing non-value-added tasks and replace them with the new ones. The time hump doesn't go away. Over time, we get tired of working overtime to do the new stuff along with what we were already doing. Eventually, we just go back to doing things the same way we've always done them and living with our problems. With any improvement effort, 
there will be a period of time when you do have to put in extra effort. You can't make any systems change happen overnight. In this example, you can see where this extra effort begins being made on the left-hand side of the chart. The amount of extra time needed reaches its peak after two to three months. If old non-value-added tasks are replaced with new ones, the extra time requirement finally subsides 10 to 15 months after the kickoff of the Performance Improvement Initiative. Now, this is just an example. You may be able to accelerate the conversion. The key point is there are non-value-added tasks currently in people's jobs. Eliminate those tasks to make time for the new tasks. It's the best way to help make this happen. On the right side of the chart, notice the significant decrease in the amount of time spent on tasks that took up 100% of the time on the left-hand side of the chart at the start of the project. At both the start and end of the time period if shown, the leader is spending an average of nine hours a day at work. A successful job transition is reflected by the fact that over one half of the old non-value-added time is being spent doing new value-added tasks once the transition time period has elapsed. Mm -hmm.